In this lesson, we'll be writing a function that fetches RSS feeds and returns a JSON object that we'll use for our app. The first thing we'll need is the Netlify Lambda plugin for Vue. We'll add this to our project by copying the command listed here, Vue add Netlify Lambda. This will let us call our function from our app without needing the URL when it gets deployed to Netlify. It does this by setting up a proxy to where the function is running so that it matches the final deployed URL. So you'll see here in the command line that it's created some extra files. The Lambda directory in the root of the project is the compiled code from what we write in the source Lambda directory. The netlify.taml file serves as instructions for Netlify and what to do when it receives our code. So it's telling Netlify what command to run to build our app, where to find the built version of our app, and where the functions are located. So we'll have a look now at what we have. So first step is we're going to rename this hello.js to feed.js. And then we'll clear it out. For the next step, we're going to install a package called RSS parser. And this will fetch an RSS feed and return JSON. Now we're going to bring that into our feeds.js. Next, we need our handler function. This is what will be executed when we hit the URL for this function. It'll receive a few arguments, but we're only concerned with the callback one. And this is what we'll use to send back the response for our feeds. The first thing I'm going to do is set up an array of the feeds that I want to see. And uh, feel free to throw in any that you want here as well. So I have some posts that will come in from CodePen, a few things from Hacker News, and a list of what's trending on GitHub, specifically what's trending in JavaScript. Next up, we'll create a parser from RSS Parser, and this is what will fetch the feeds and return a JSON object. Then we're going to create an array with all of these requests. Now because these requests are going to be asynchronous, we're going to use promise.all to wait until everything is ready, and then we can send that back as our response. So this is where we're going to use the callback function. The first argument is optional for providing results of a failure. What we're interested in is getting these feeds back, so we'll pass an object as the second argument, and null for the first. First thing we're going to do here is add a status code of 200 to say everything's okay. And then we return the body, which will be json.stringify response. Okay, and then that's it. So we're going to take it for a test run by running npm run serve. And you'll see here, it's after compiling our function code along with our app. And this will happen whenever you make changes, so you don't need to run two separate terminal windows or two separate panes to get your project going. So if we visit localhost 8080, we'll see that's our app. And then if we go to Netlify, functions, feeds, we should get our JSON response. There we go. So that's fine for now. 
Next step is to start writing our view app. In the next lesson, we'll set up our component for displaying a list of feeds and get a general feel for the structure of our application. Later on in the class then, we'll integrate this Nettlefy function into our app to display everything.